What's up guys? So I figured I'd do a few videos talking about my incremental writing plugin for Obsidian. This first video is going to be concerned with the basic functionality of the plugin. So for example, adding things to the queue, reviewing your repetitions and so on. The second video is going to talk about more advanced stuff. So for example, having multiple queues, loading different queues and changing the scheduling options. And then finally, I'm also going to do a video where I actually show you how to practically use the plugin um, by giving you a demonstration of actually how I use it um, for my daily writing. If you've never heard of incremental writing before, I definitely recommend that you go and check out uh, an earlier video that I did where I explained a little bit more about the ideas behind incremental writing and, for example, how it relates to incremental reading. So what I'm going to do now is just jump straight into things. So once you've downloaded the plugin, probably the first thing you're going to want to do is add some stuff to your incremental writing queue. There are actually a number of ways you can add notes to the queue. I'll start with the simplest ones. So for example, if I go to just some article in the file explorer, if I right click on that file, there's an option to add the file to the incremental writing queue. So if I click on that, you'll see that it pops up with this dialog and I can choose which queue I want to add the file to. I can also choose the first repetition date, which is the first date I want to review this note. I can also choose the priority and I can also write some notes if I want to remember actually why I added this thing to the queue. One cool feature is that if you have the natural language dates plugin installed, you can use natural language to specify the first rep date. So for example, I can just type tomorrow or next week and it will work. And you can see that the incremental writing queue is literally just a markdown table uh, with a little bit of uh, YAML metadata at the top. So I can activate preview mode to make it more readable. And you can see that it's just got a link to the notes, the priority, any notes about why I added this thing to the queue. It's got the current interval. And finally, it has the date of the next repetition. So as I just mentioned at the top, there's a little bit of uh, YAML metadata um, relating to how the repetitions should be scheduled. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description to the GitHub page, which goes into more detail. So there are also a couple of other ways you can add individual notes to the queue. So if I just go to one of the notes over here, and you can see that there's a command to add the note to the queue. And you can see it's just the same as you saw before. I'll hit add to queue. And you can see that another repetition has been added to the queue. So there's one more method that you can use to add individual notes to the queue. If you activate the add note to queue through a fuzzy finder command, you can see that it will allow you to add any of the notes in your Obsidian vault uh, to the incremental writing queue. And just like before, I can hit add to queue. So if you're someone with an enormous vault of notes, it's going to be pretty tedious if you're just adding every single note one by one to your incremental writing queue. So there are a couple of ways that you can just bulk add notes uh, to a queue. For example, if you go over to the file browser and right click on the folder and hit add folder to incremental writing queue, you'll see that you can bulk add notes to the queue. So for example, I can choose a queue, um, I can choose the minimum priority, the maximum priority, and the earliest rep date and the latest rep date. And essentially what's happening here is that uh, I can adjust the interval between which the notes will be spread when I add them to the queue. So for example, if I set the minimum priority to 10 and the maximum priority to 20, all of these 60 notes will be spread at even intervals between the minimum priority of 10 and the maximum priority of 20. In the same way, you have the earliest rep date and the latest rep date. So if I say the earliest rep date should be today and the latest rep date should be next week, each of these 60 notes will be allocated evenly between uh, each day between today and next week. So I can add all of those to the queue. So the incremental writing plugin also allows you to use the output of a search as inputs into an incremental writing queue. So for example, if I just do a simple search, for example, path uh, articles, you can see that in the search pane, there's this new button, add to IWQ. If you click on that, 
you can see that again we have the option to choose a queue uh, do a minimum priority max priority earliest rep date and latest rep date this is probably one of the most useful features because you can combine the operators in a smart way so that you only add those things that you really want to add to the queue and you leave all the rest out so now we have a bunch of stuff added to the queue it's time to start reviewing the repetitions so to access the current repetition, you just need to click on the current repetition button. And that will essentially just teleport you to the repetition with the highest priority that is also due to be reviewed on this day. So once I'm done with the repetition, I can continue on to the next repetition by using the next repetition command. So now if I go back to the queue, I can show you how the previous uh, repetition was scheduled after I hit next repetition. So you can see that the interval and the next repetition date for the last repetition have both been increased. If there's a repetition that you've decided you don't want to continue reviewing over time, you can dismiss it from the queue using the dismiss command. The dismiss command just removes the row corresponding to that repetition from the markdown table. Finally, there's also the ability to add individual blocks to a queue. So if I go to the add block to queue command and hit add to queue, you can see that a block ref has been generated. And if I go to the queue and scroll down, you can see that the block reference link has been added to the queue and scheduled for me. Okay, so that's it for the first video. That should be all you need to get started with the plugin. If you're interested in going deeper, for example, uh, having multiple queues, uh, changing the scheduling options and other things, uh, you should definitely check out the next video in the series. I hope this was useful. I hope you get some value um, from this plugin and I'll see you in the next video.